everyone. Welcome to Friday Night Footy on Fox. Brought to you by the mighty Ford F-150. It's coming in 2023. Look out for that one. It is a double header. It's a busy night. Melbourne taking on the Bombers at the MCG. The home of football with a mighty Shane Warne stand in action for the very first time. And a huge game over in Adelaide. Showdown number 51. Adelaide Crows taking on Port Adelaide. It is going to be a very busy night. And one we've got covered. Nathan Buckley, Jonathan Brown, Nick Revolt here in the studio. We've got boys all over the country, right here at Fox Footy. You don't want to be anywhere else, folks? No, mate. This one will be interesting. Essendon 0 and 2. How do you handle that? What sort of pressure does that bring and what do we expect in the first 10 minutes? Absolutely. Might have got an insight into last night's game, didn't they, the way the Bulldogs approached it. But it was a scrappy affair last year between these two sides. Uh, Melbourne did, but they only just got over the line. So looking forward to the way this pans out, Rui. This is a big night for the coach of the Essendon Football Club. I think you look at the players that are out for Essendon. Players are human. They look around the rooms. They see the faces that are missing. They see the opposition. They're, they're almost trying to make a case for themselves. So these are the nights where you've got to generate... Generate a plan, generate enthusiasm and give your boys belief that you can bo have a boil over happen. And start well. Kath Lockton will be with that man, Ben Rutten. Right now, we're with the coach of the Melbourne Footy Club, the Premiership coach, if you don't mind. has got a nice ring to it, Simon Goodwin, always. Good with his time. Welcome, Goody. Yeah, Gaz, lads. Good to be here. Nice to be back at the MCG, the home of footy. Um, this is a very big night for the football club, given that, um, you know, you've had a couple of ins and outs. Your Premiership 22 hasn't come together quite yet, but you've got two wins on the board. Yeah, we have, Gaz, and it's been a good first start you know, to the year with a couple of wins on board and obviously missing a few of our back half of the ground. It's about to withstand some pressure in that back half of the ground. It's been you know, fabulous for the boys that have come in and performed, but we still probably haven't got our game quite to the level that we'd like just yet, and that's our game four to centre, so that's what we're looking to do tonight. So on that back half, uh, Goody, it seems like your mids and forwards have been able to play the way you've wanted them to, which actually puts a little less pressure on your back six and allows them to maybe dr fall into the game and uh, and find their way over the last couple of weeks? Yeah, it has, Bucks. Obviously, you know that team defence is right across the ground now. We've had some stability through our forwards and our mids, and you now they provide a great ability to defend the ground for us and helps our backs position themselves the way they need to. So you know, our backs have been able to withstand some entry, but have been able to stand up really well. Hey, Goody, I think we all thought a couple of years ago that Sam Wiedemann was going to take the competition by storm as one of the, the great young key forwards. He gets his opportunity tonight with Ben Brown a laid out. When you sit down with him on Monday and do his review tape, what do you want it to look like? I just want to see him compete unconditionally for the whole game, really. You know, he's, he's worked incredibly hard through the summer. I'm wrapped that he's got his opportunity, and we knew these opportunities would be presented, and, and Sam's been ready for a while now. You know, the last three or four weeks, he's been ready, and he's trained with incredible purpose. He's, he's worked incredibly hard at his aerial competitive stuff at ground level, and I'm looking forward to seeing that come out tonight. Hey, Goody, did you uh, play a tagger on Christian Petrarca at training this week? <laughs> Tom Sparrow get the job just in preparation for what may happen tonight? Yeah, look, we've played a tag on track most of the summer. So it's actually something we've actually been working towards ourselves is to be able to make sure that no matter what happens to Christian, Clayton, whoever it may be, that we can adapt as a team and get an advantage for a team. So we've worked through those scenarios most of the summer, so we'll be ready for whatever comes our way. You think it's coming? Oh, look, I think it's coming for one of our players at some stage. But, um, you know, as I said, we're, we're pretty well prepared. And ultimately, it's not about the individual for us. It's about how we get the team to function. So the biggest thing for us is how we get an advantage and we use that tag again, uh, in our advantage. Do you want it to come? Oh, look, it's come a fair bit for Clayton. Um, and Christian's been tagged at times before. So, um, you know, we expect it to come more often, you know, throughout the year. Uh, whether it be Max or whether it be Clayton or whether it be Christian. Um, and we welcome that. You know, we're looking forward to that and we'll try and get an advantage where we can. How's that Shane Warne stand looking goody? For the first time, there'll be a sporting event there. It's a pretty historic night in lots of ways. Yeah, look, it was an amazing, you know, the other night, the memorial service. And I think he's just such an icon, you know, in world sport. And, um, you know, just to see, look over there and see the Shane Warne stand, it's, it's a pretty iconic stand. And, um, you know, he's going to be with us for a long time. It's going to be a big night. Thanks for your time, mate. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. So I'm Goodman, coach of the Melbourne Footy Club. So, like your question, do you want a tag? We'll talk about it in much greater detail as the night wears on. It's going to be a big topic, but you're alluding to the fact that they might welcome it. It gives them a, a driver's seat. Put, puts you in a position where you can dictate. 
Uh, hold your thoughts on that, boys. We'll debate it long and hard through the course of the pre-game. Ralphie, hey, Ralphie, <laughs> uh, COVID has struck again uh, this time. The Demons affected. Uh, that's correct, yeah. As we reported this afternoon, Ben Brown, he's out of tonight's game. He has not tested positive, but he is a COVID close contact. So every club is paranoid. Melbourne, of course, had their coaches' meetings via Zoom earlier in this week, but thankfully he is the only case there. So, look, Sam Wiedemann gets his chance. His first chance since round 13 last year. Now, he had massive offers from clubs, including Collingwood. He wanted to stay. He wanted to back himself in at this club, and so he absolutely he gets a cracking chance at it today. So Toby Bedford is the Medi sub for Melbourne. Now at Essendon, 2018 best and fairest winner at Devon Smith was dramatically dropped last night. Well, he's back as the Medi sub. Might get his chance at some stage today. And triple best and fairest winner Zach Meredith with the Cinder's Moses surgery, probably eight weeks. But the fairy tale story of round one, the Rising Star nominee in Nick Martin, he gets his chance returning from COVID as well. Good on you, Alfie. Um, who takes over the merit role then. And that is the ability to just go and hunt the footy at will. Oh, I think it's got to be doing Shield. It's, it's sort of like for like yeah. in a way. I wouldn't be surprised to see Stringer spend more time through the middle tonight, particularly against those bigger bodies. And, and we, he mentioned Devin Smith there getting omitted. I love that from Ben Rutten. You don't want to tackle, you don't want to apply pressure in the first two weeks. Not held captive by talent or big names. Yep. You pay a price. I think that's a, that's a really big coaching statement. Challenge is for, the challenge for Stringer in terms of midfield minutes is his fitness levels. Yeah. So he ran out of gas last week. He was good early in the game, but he's had a limited pre-season. What about Wiedemann? Where can he get to? As an opposition coach, you've watched him. I think he played a couple of good games against the Pirates. Well, he moves really well, and he, mm. and he moves on to the ball quite well. I think that the, the challenge for him is doing it more consistently over a four-quarter performance. And he gets that chance now. Ben Brown yeah. has obviously um, superseded him and took over and, and played in those finals and got... Uh, you know, get, gets the premiership label sort of against his name. But Sam, there's no reason why they can't work together. Tom McDonald is obviously a, a, a mm. mad runner, up and mm. back, and puts a lot of pressure on as well. You, you watch Melbourne as close as anyone. Yeah. So, Goody said he wants to see him compete. Yeah. Does that mean he doesn't always compete as strongly as he needs to? I think his last 12 months he has. I think he's, I think that message has been drilled into him that often. that He'll, he'll crash packs, mm. he'll, he'll force spillage. He wasn't always doing that earlier in the piece. Maybe at the you know, sacrifice of taking him out. I've got one bit of advice for him, Gary. Yes, please. As my old coach, Lee Matthews, <laughs> 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 you got a long we got one in the football. we got one early. Launch in the you football. You've got to get Sool him in. Sool him in. Then you've got to launch it at Gary. Right. Right. That's what Lee would say. Hey, I'm writing it down. It'll go up on our board. Um, Look it up. What Sool. about the centre bounce stuff? And, and you've got to, this is we are still learning. I say this quite seriously when you come in and talk about stuff that you look at as a former coach just out of the game. And this centre bounce stuff and the metres gained from it is interesting to all of us. Just yeah. explain. Yeah, well, metres gained from from clearance, not just centre bounce, but from clearance in total. It either puts gives your forwards opportunity and allows your backs to set up the so way they So how do they, they measure the, the, the... like so, right, There's the number right here. So yeah. Melbourne are down 85 from stoppage. They're number 12 in the comp. And Essendon are down 847. Explain so, that. So for Melbourne, 85 metres is the net difference between the, the yards they take from stoppage and the yards they give up. Where does that measure, though? Is that the first give? Is it the second give? Or? From, from, from winning the ball at clearance to the next turnover. Right. So, it, so can that be, can be it can be a chain. It can be a quick 30 metre kick and the opposition defender wins it and rebounds. So that's, that's a plus 30. 30. Plus okay. 30. Yep. So in the end, what you can see, the real um, number there is Essendon. Mm. So Essendon, are like, that's a big number down. So yep. they're putting their backs under enormous pressure. Right. And in fact, when the opposition win that clearance, they're losing the next contest and then it's going right. deeper into their back line, yep. which means all of their forwards have to empty out, all of their mids have to get back and their defenders are under mass pressure. It looked like that really last week. Yeah, it did, and, and round one. I mean, round one, it was it was 52 points or something down just from clearance. So, so the Cats in round one were able to win the footy. They didn't touch it, the no. Bombers, and the Cats would score time and time again. And how do, you reckon, how do you reckon it felt to be a Cats backman when that's happening? Oh, like you, you've you, got the game on your days. terms. You, you're actually days, defending yeah. on your toes. So the challenge, even though Essendon's backline might be more established than Melbourne's backline, because the Melbourne have got a few younger players or players that haven't been in their A-grade backline, they're still getting to play the game in their terms because at least the Melbourne mids yeah. are, are allowing them to come up the ground and to play on their terms. Yeah. So you see the number and you think, oh, that's a big deal, but it affects more than just that. It affects more than and, just and, the stopping. And this is not a knock on the Essendon individuals, but Essendon don't really have big-name defenders, especially in their key stocks. So you don't have an Alex Rance there. You don't have a Dylan Grimes. So, yeah, the challenges around that, they've already got their hands full with opposition And players. I dare say that Redman, Hind and Heppel playing behind the ball, they like to be winning the ball and running off. Yeah, and they're yeah. probably there as much for that as they are for their defensive yeah. capabilities. So the Essendon midfield battle and their capacity to at least break even 
for their backs is going to be crucial tonight. So then you go to the Ruckman and what role they have in this in terms of getting hands on footy and where it goes and tap outs not as important, tap outs to advantage more important or, or do you get someone like Luke Jackson who comes along and goes, well, tap out not all that important because he goes and gets his own stuff. So you've got Jackson Gorn, you've got Draper who really highly rated. He'll compete and compete hard. Phillips has been brought in because yeah. of the enormity of the task ahead of them. He needs to do more around the ground. Draper, I love his competitiveness. He's that old school ruckman. I think that can match up well against Jackson and Gorn, but needs to give a bit more around the ground as well. Phillips will do what he does. You know, he just he's a good competitor and just has a crack. Uh, but those two men, well, that man, Max Gorn and Jackson, are so potent around the ground outside of the stoppages. So it's not just what they do for Melbourne. It's what they do to the opposition mm. in their planning. Essendon haven't done this. Mm. They haven't picked two, ruck, two, two genuine ruckmen for a game. So straight away, they're compromising their team selection to be able to combat what the opposition are dip, dishing up. And we may well see that if someone gets run with. Because um, Essendon don't have their first choice A-grade midfield. And that's debatable whether it's an A-grade midfield even with every player mm. available. Yep. They, they're probably going to need to use a C-grader on an A-grader in Petrarca or Oliver to see if they can square that up. They brought in two Ruckman because they don't want Gorn and Jackson to have their way with just one Ruckman by working him over. So this is about just trying to even it up, just trying to, trying to make this as much of a contest as possible. I've loved... I mean, the, the cornerstone of this Melbourne side in recent times has been selflessness. I've loved how Max Gorn, five-time All-Australian Ruckman, takes his time away when he recognises that Jackson is the player, as he was last week against the Gold Coast Suns, as right? he was in the grand final. So, good, great signs there. Hey, we'll take a break. It's double header Friday night here on Fox Footy. We've got a show now. We're going to cross to the boys doing Adelaide and Port Adelaide. Massive game at the MCG. Melbourne take on Essendon. Tonight it's massive over in Adelaide at Adelaide Oval. There's Josh Shelley. He was going to play soccer as a young boy coming out of Shepparton, but thankfully for football, he's chosen the oval ball. And Port Adelaide need to get their game going, of course. Uh, both teams under a little bit of pressure. We're here in the studio. We've sent two of the biggest guns that we could possibly find to Adelaide Oval to cover this big showdown. It is showdown 51, 26 to Port, 24 to Adelaide. And here they are, Jason Dunstall and Matthew Pavlich. Welcome, gentlemen. It's a handsome couple you make. <laughs> Thank you, Gaz. Good afternoon, gents. We have got a stunning afternoon over here in Adelaide for showdown 51. Y you couldn't ask for better conditions, Pav, but most importantly... Forgetting about the fact that it's a showdown, we've got two teams desperate to get their season rolling. Round two and a couple of teams already <laughs> under the pump. Actually ran into Matthew Nix a little early and you could just sense his nerves, he was on edge and he's got the younger team. You think all the, all the pressure tonight is yep. about Port Adelaide. They're the team, uh, two prelims in a row, uh, so many stars in this side. They've sort of made a statement at selection with uh, Dersmer and Finlayson going out Correct. of the team. What does that mean for the attitude in those change rooms? We'll find out in a couple of hours' time. But, uh, yeah, you just get a sense walking around the town. You're right, it's beautiful conditions, but there is just that sort of fierceness about what a showdown brings and the fact that uh, both teams already under the pump in the season. And how would you go as a youngster making your debut in a showdown? Not bad, Jed McEntee for the Crows. How good is that going to be? Uh, it's brilliant, yeah. A young lad from Mitchin making his uh, debut here. Sturt player in the local league and great to see him get that opportunity. And he would have grown up watching these games, no doubt, understanding uh, the rivalry, understanding what it means to the state. So great opportunity opportunity to show his, his wares in uh, game one. And one of the things about these showdowns, traditionally it hasn't really mattered where the teams are on the ladder, even though they're both down near the bottom. We know that the uh, expectations are much higher on Port Adelaide. Not so for the Crows, but we're still expecting a fierce battle. We certainly are. That's exactly what a showdown will bring. And I reckon you, you just sense Adelaide's inability to hit or use the ball that well. If they can turn some of the contested work, some of that pressure they brought the first two weeks into some skill execution, I know some of the their directors and some of their coaches <laughs> will be happy with that. Uh, Jace, they might be able to put some pressure on Port and you just know in, in a town like Adelaide, pressure on per Port early in a showdown, what will that mean? Cannot wait for this one. Yeah, absolutely. And probably not a bad time for Mark Rusciuto to be missing through COVID protocols, <laughs> just getting himself out of the news for a little while. Hey, looking forward to this one. It's going to be a beauty, boys. Good on you, boys. Before we get back to a full house over in Adelaide Oval, Jason Dunstall there, Matthew Pavlich, Anthony Hudson, Dwayne Russell, that's as well covered as it's going to be. Just before I go to Kath Lachlan with Ben Rutten, uh, Mark Rusciuto had some very strong words in his role as a breakfast uh, announcer, which is great. The fact that he's the director of the Adelaide Footy Club, does that resonate with that football club? How do they handle that? You know all about you, it. You, you're uh, right. well qualified. Hey, you're you're, you're the man to the question. Why? Pucks. why? Well, your president was a high profile. Oh, so you've gone to that Oh, one. you've forgotten that, haven't you? No, no, I understand. There's Quickly conflicts of interest everywhere, mate. Yeah. 
Well, He's you were, made at me. You were, you were really well, happy okay, with Okay, so would you, have been happy, would you have been happy with Mark Rusciuto as the footy director saying you can't kick, you can't handball, you can't kick for goal? When you have an official role in a football club, I think you should avoid making specific statements yeah, about your own. But, but if you're in the media, you can't avoid it. Yes, you can. Mm. It's a choice. But if you're going, if you, but if you do, but if you're doing, sure, mate, if you're doing your job properly, if you're doing your job properly in the media, so is it one or the other? Uh, when if you're going to commit 100, percent it yep. should be to the club that you're, you've got an official capacity at. As if that means, if that means there's a detriment, say you're a 95 percent media performer as a result, well then, that to me. So be it. Do so you just think you pull your punches on your own club and whack every other club as hard as you want, but pull your punches on your own club? Well, you're not whacking. Are you whacking everyone? Are you? Are we just? Is that all we do? Yeah. I don't think. No, no. Rue but when, but, but when it's time to criticise, what I would say is that Rue is a very passionate man. Yep. Mark is a very yep. passionate man, and when his club's not going well, I think sometimes he speaks from his heart. Almost goes too hard at his own club. Yeah. I think he goes harder at Adelaide than potentially. There'd be club. Uh, words between the coach and. Mark Rashida. <laughs> how do you reckon that would end up? <laughs> what would you have, if you were the coach, what would yeah. you have said and how would you have handled it? It's, it's had to happen before, yeah. Well, how did you handle it? Um, a coffee and I don't reckon that's great for us. And received the other way? Probably not. No. <laughs> 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 great having him on Fox Footy. I tell you, we're just going to peel back the young in just a little bit by a little bit. Let's go to Kath Lockman, who, Kath Lockman, who has the coach at the Essendon Footy Club, Ben Rutten. Well, Ben, coming up an improved performance, how have you put the losses, though, and the injuries aside and convinced your boys you can beat the reigning Premiers tonight? Yeah, look, it's a good point. I mean, there's all, obviously a lot of uh, external talk about the results, but, um, you yeah, know, we're, we're always trying to talk about the process and how we can continue to improve and get better, and, um, you yeah, know, our group's pretty good at that. Yeah, so four changes tonight, but specifically, what are the plans and adjustments you've made to cover the loss of Zach Merritt and all he brings to your midfield? Yeah, look, we do, and it's been, uh, you know, unfortunate. We never like losing our... You know, the best players of the game to injury, but um, yeah, I think we'll, we've got some personnel. We, you know, Dylan Shield comes back into the team. You know, Andy McGrath will probably spend a bit more time through the midfield as well as, as Caldwell and Parrish as well. So we think we've got some, um, you know, the personnel there to be able to, to, to cover Zach best we can. So to tag or not to tag, will you tag Christian Petrarca? Yeah, look, it's certainly one of those things. I, th I think I spoke about it earlier in the week. It's something that we're wanting to evolve as part of our game. And, you know, tonight we might get an opportunity to do that. Uh, we understand he's a great pl player, as along with Oliver and Viney, and you know, so it's um, it sounds a simple solution, but sometimes it's uh, a bit uh, easier said than done. So was that a yes? We will we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Who would be the leading contender if you were to tag him tonight? Uh, look, I think we've got a couple of op options. Yeah, Andy McGrath, I think, is a, a pretty defensive. Defensive-minded midfielder. Yeah. Now Caldwell's the other one who we're learning more about all the time, and uh, he may be one that might be able to do some work for us at stoppages. The Max Gore and Luke Jackson ruck combination is pretty lethal. You brought in a second ruck tonight, but I love Sam Draper's aggression. Will you get him to go after Max Gore? What, what's your plan? Yeah, look, it's a, they're obviously a formidable pair, you know, Gorn and Jackson, and that was uh, certainly part of the rationale with, behind us bringing in uh, Andrew Phillips to go, um, you know, give Drapes a bit of support. Yeah, we love what Drapes does. He's a he's a powerful, explosive guy. But you know, to expect him to go for two hours against uh, two quality ruckmen, you know, we maybe we're asking a bit much for him. So yeah. uh, Andrew Phillips will be able to give him some good support in the ruck. Ben, thanks for your time. Good luck. No worries. Thanks, Kath. Thank you. Uh, we, uh, uh, Kath tried very hard. Yeah, I, I think it's a yes. I think it's a yes. I think it's a yes. We said at stoppages there'll be some work done. We'll find out. Yeah. We'll find out um, very shortly. In fact, about 23 minutes now. You went with the DNA yep. off the round one game. Melbourne versus the Western Bulldogs. At various stages, the Demons look vulnerable. The fact is they've been able to handle most things that have come their way in the past ten weeks. That's the last ten games of last year and the first two here. What are we seeing? What's the brand? Yeah, it's a, it's a big enough sample size. We, we know they're really good in the contest, particularly away from stoppage. They don't really prioritise winning stoppage. It's what happens around the ground. The one thing that stands out is they're just really, really difficult to, to score on. Melbourne. So hard to move the footy against, hard to score on. That, that is their DNA. This is what Melbourne games look like. So let's have a look at how they actually defend. Look at those two guys on the, the left of screen there. We'll get to them later. But winger and winger, half forward. Winger and a half forward. The, but the dogs are out here. So Melbourne look really vulnerable behind the ball all of a sudden. The dogs have got an extra number forward. But notice the Melbourne defenders. They just come forward to the dangerous player in front of them. Almost, you, you would almost call it recklessly because they are so confident in the ability of the guys on the off-ball side, the winger and the half-ball that we highlighted, 
to get back around and fill that dangerous space. That's a 120 metre run there from the winger Langdon, who's spoiling the ball, and the half forward Spargo Bang, who wins it at ground level. So it's the ability for their half forwards, their wingers, to hold their width, to run the length of the ground. You, you need the capability to be able to do it, that gives the defenders the licence to just come forward really aggressively and defend the, defend the dangerous players. The challenge now, from a, as we look at this game, is for well Essendon. Done. Well done. It's a really good, good lap. Thanks. Very good. Is can they score 80 plus points to win the game? That's what we've got to try and find out whether they're capable of doing that. And there've been better sides than Essendon that have struggled to do that in the past 10 weeks. Correct. And and that's the restriction that we just saw in those Melbourne numbers is is part of the battle. But the very first couple of numbers you showed is win it and then win it back. I mean, I think that post clear, that post contested ball differential. It's your, your Neil Bullens, um, obviously Spargo when the ball goes forward, and then you've got small defenders that actually go and win that contest out of stoppage as well. So they they they're very hard to beat. They've got good ball winners in one on one or two on two situations all over the field, and they've got a midfield that actually spread to find that out number. So that that's exactly what we're talking. Luke Beveridge, uh, Luke Beveridge mentioned about what Western Bulldogs were able to do last night. That's what we see from Melbourne yeah. consistently now. Yeah, the great thing about going back to the footy bucks. We saw it the first game on that Wednesday night at the MCG from the elevated view, how well they run as a yeah. team. Like, they've got some great athletes. They're a really fit team. Yes, they've got the connection, but they've got the fitness capacity too to get up and down the ground and support each other. Beautiful, uh, beautifully done, boys. There's a, a lot to look at tonight in terms of the way coaches set up and how they try and counteract a team that has been getting the job done more often than not. We're going to take a break. You get the MCG for this footy club yet to open their account for season 2022. Finalists last year, they would have been expecting to be participating again by season's end. It's only two games in. They'd like to open that account tonight. They've got the toughest job in footy. Taking on the reigning Premier at the MCG. A couple of changes. Martin comes back in. The NAB rising star from round one, Dylan Shields, going to be a help with Merritt out into the middle. Phillips to give some ruck support. I know that Dev Smith got dropped, but he will also now be the sub. Midnight for the Essendon Footy Club. Their coach was talking up their youngsters, which is good to hear. Peter Wright, oh, he had a big first quarter last week. Don't worry about that. It is big. It's the MCG. They're going to have a big job ahead of them, as we said. One man who's going to occupy a fair bit of their time, we think, has started the season in cracking style. His name is Christian Petrarca. Petrarca through the traffic. Delightful. Petrarca with power and strength through the hips. Petrarca to add some beautiful icing to the cake. That's on target. That's beautiful. Magnificent. Doesn't get any better than that. Petrarca is a shining light up forward. He's in rear, Nick. 38 possessions and 40 in his first two games. A Norm Smith medalist before that. Nathan Buckley, you, uh, in all seriousness, would have had um, runs of form like this. Would you have preferred to have mm. played with a tagger or without a tagger? No, you definitely want to be uh, have free reign and to do what you wish to do. And, and Christian should expect some attention. Um, now, whether that's in the form of a stoppage player who just leans in on him or whether it's a hard tag all over the field, we'll find out. You told me your first three games for the Collingwood Footy Club or for the Brisbane Footy Club. Who mm. were they? Who were your opponents? Yeah, so I had Anthony Stevens, Tony Free, and then Todd Viney, who were the three best taggers. The, of the first day. three games of your career, yeah, and that was not run with lean on, maybe just stand with stoppage, just no. with hard tags. Yeah, there was some pretty hard tags. What can he expect tonight, Petrarca? I think that he will get attention, but I just don't know how effective it can be. You see in those highlights there, a lot of the ball that he wins is in the middle of a pack of eight or nine blokes. And any one of the four or five opposition players can put some heat on him at, at any given time. He's just so good at extracting out of pressure. Thanks to McCain, taggers might not seem special. We might see one tonight. I'm going to get a debate going between John Brown and Nick Revolt in a moment. We did a game last week. We watched uh, Zach Merritt. We watched uh, Lockie Neal running around. We watched Darcy Parrish. Neal was the one that turned the game on its head. Um, Zach Merritt was in a similar vein of form. Chris Fagan went to him with um, Berry. This is a stoppage late in the game. Um, game still just in the balance here. Berry with Merritt. Merritt gets first possession. Berry, who's got, uh, he's got accountability for him. He's there. He's inside his jumper. He causes a turnover. Neil kicks a goal. One of two. Best player on the ground. I mean, is that is it as simple as that, or is it 
Well, actually, I won't ask you. You hold your fire because I've put this to the two big guns. In fact, they wouldn't know anything about tagging these. So they just well, we used to get tagged. What are you talking about? Every what? week we got tagged. Remini had Stephen Silvani and I had Nigel Smart. Fords get tagged every week. Hey, the first game. I'm going to ask you to speak yet. Uh, we've got a Melbourne. <laughs> we've got a Melbourne team running out on the ground, if you don't mind. Uh, the late change, if you haven't caught up with it, Ben Brown. Uh, the COVID protocols have claimed him. So Sam Wiedemann gets his opportunity and needs to grab a hold of that and talk about that with the big boys. But um, it's Luke Jackson, the star uh, in the making. So, tag or not to tag? That is the question as Big Maxi leads his boys out. And Brownie, you say yes. I'm for the pro tag tonight, absolutely. Where Essendon's at, zip and two. Uh, now, whether it's Cordwell or... Cordwell or uh, McGrath, maybe. But I like the defensive mindset that that established within the team. Because if Essendon are going to win tonight, they need to keep Melbourne at less than 10 goals. If you let Petrarca off the chain and he goes out and gets 30-plus, they're going to win the game. They're clearly not going to score less than 10 goals. So I think it just sends a good message to the rest of your team. Christian Petrarca is far too dangerous forward of centre not to tag and not to be accountable with Roy. It's a nice opening. You've left four seconds on the clock, which we'll take into account when we adjudicate Concise, this. Harry. I like, Concise. I like, I like it. it short. I like it. Now, Nick, I'm not necessarily saying this is your actual thoughts, but for the sake of the debate, mm. you say no tag. Yeah, I say no tag. And because you guys are living in the past, it's not 1986 when Bucks started playing and players got tagged. <laughs> we saw Simon Goodwin's face. He, he lit up like the Cheshire Cat when the uh, prospect of tagging Christian Petrarca was raised because they're ready for for it and what that means is you can dictate as a football club you send a player to Christian okay perfect Christian you go create a 2v1 and guess what Clayton Oliver's going to run around and have 50 and kick three oh, you want to tag Christian with Caldwell beauty let's go Jai let's go to the forward line see how you like playing as a defender so I just think you hand the opposition the ability to Buzzer. be proactive Buzzer. when you tag uh, nicely Pretty done from both. Uh, that was a bit long-winded for me, Gary. Well, it's not up to you. It's up to Nate. <laughs> <laughs> Who wins, Bucks? I, I'm going with Brownie. But I think that they will run with tonight. Um, I thought I thought Brownie's arguments were quite succinct and really went over time. So that didn't, that didn't, that didn't go in your favour. Yeah, well, like, I'm going home. And you, had a cra- and you had a crack at me. You had a crack at me. That's that not doesn't go help. Well, really. You're cracking the judge. Yeah, we'll find yeah. out. It's not yeah. far away from the opening bounce. We'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll dig into some of the more serious issues that we need to discuss. It's Melbourne taking on Essendon at the MCG. Friday night footy on Fox. Footy on Fox, brought to you by Ford F-150, coming 2023. Who else can be the chemist warehouse player in focus than Peter Wright, who turned on a quarter that oh, Ron Kerry oh, never wow. took one eight of, marks? In one of the biggest calls of all time. He never took eight marks in a quarter like Peter Wright. He didn't take a mark after quarter time, and I think you put the brakes on. Did you on. go early, Gaz? Mm. Mm. No, Did you go a, a little bit it was, early? It was a Wayne Kerry like performance, mm. and if you can't get your head around it, you three, you've got to think outside yourselves. So had I said it was a Brown like <laughs> or a Revolt, you'd both be going. Yeah. <laughs> this is what see, this is what he does. Probably right. You're see, probably, see, you're how probably right. Right. see how he tries to deflect. <laughs> just deflect, hey, deflect. The, bo- the bottom line is he was so important to that team it and when they had something to fire at, they looked like a you know completely different team. It was a it was a quarter for the ages. Yep. Now the bigger question is, yep, we had our fun, is can he maintain this over a four quarter performance? If they can't, then they're gonna struggle to score. Yeah, supply did dry up in fairness to him after quarter time, but I like the way he's tracking guys here. You just weren't sure where he was going. He's a very fit athlete, uh, even though he's a big man. Uh, but he's starting to play with better presence, I think. Uh, he tried to get the ball too much on the lead. I feel as if he impacts the contest better now. It was a bit on the back of the mids, too. Like, Stringer was awesome early, yeah, wasn't he? Dominated he, the first he dominated He dominated early. So, Essendon started really well. Good supply. Peter looked right, looked great. Maybe not like Wayne Carey, but he looked really good. <laughs> but from quarter time on... It was six goals to 14. Yeah. It was a smashing uh, after that yeah. first quarter performance. Right, it's a big night for who? Let's go down the line. Who are you going for, Bucks? Well, I'm not going to back over it. That's a big night for you, Gary. Um, I think <laughs> that um, you know, Wayne Carey owned Friday nights, so, as North Melbourne did. So if Peter Wright's going to be anything,
anything like Wayne Carey's got on tonight. Yeah, I reckon you played on him one time. You got the job on him one day, didn't you? Oh, one all. Um, yeah, big night oh. for you. <laughs> no, he smashed me another time. He smashed me another time. Yeah. Uh, big night for you. If you keep that up, you won't be back. <laughs> Sam Wiedemann. Uh, right. Oh, jeez. Sam Wiedemann, guys. Sam we, we spoke about Sam Wiedemann briefly. Clear, he's obviously come in for Ben Brown. He's been magnificent in the last few games for Melbourne now. So Sam Wiedemann didn't play since round 13 last year, I think. Uh, we're talking about presence. This man needs to really launch himself at the football. Uh, get to work. Get to as many po- contests as he possibly can. That's the thing I'm looking for tonight. You confident? He, he, I mean, it's a bit like the right discussion. We wait, yeah. we wait, we wait. We see flashes of it. Are you confident he'll get there? No, I, I am. I am. But clearly, he just needs to play football. Five games last year, only three goals. That's not enough contribution. What I would say in that is that when you're a young player, you get a bit of leniency. He's been around for a while now, mm. so and we think that these players are always going to make it. It's a hard game. There's no guarantee that Sam Wiedemann is going to be the player that everyone has said he's going to be, and this is a hard caper. So this is a great opportunity for him just to take the next step towards it. Seems to me to have the tools, Gaz, uh, but he just lacks the confidence a bit. So he needs that breakout game just to sort of fill him full of confidence and actually believe in himself that he can do it. Opportunity presents itself with Ben Brown, the laid out. Big night for Rui. The Essendon coach, Ben Rutten. So you mentioned right off the top that they need to come with a plan tonight, Essendon. Mm. So I think the first part is belief. You need to make these boys believe that they can come out and knock off the Premiership fancy, the reigning Premiers with, with, with players missing from their side, the Bombers. They look like they're going to do something different tonight, Essendon, because I think it's been a bit of they get the game on their terms or it's just not their day, the Bombers. So two Ruckman, maybe a tag. What's Ben Rutten going to throw at the the Melbourne Football Club? And in his interview, he clearly has gone about selection differently Mm. to cater for this challenge. He's, He's actually coaching with one hand tied behind his back tonight against the best team in the comp. So you have to make this a dour struggle. You have to make this a contest. And it, McGrath's in the middle. He's going to have to play inside minutes. You've got Cordwell. Parrish, big job for him. Tex Wanganine there on debut, the famous Wanganine name. Hey, the reality is this Melbourne defence has been decimated from a premiership point of view. There's a little window of opportunity yep. they might go to work with. They haven't played a lot of footy together. There's a little crack there. Maybe they can we'll just pry we'll that open. Bucks put it on the Essendon mids to protect the defence. Expose the Melbourne defence. That's the flip side of it. Get proactive in there and drive the ball in. No bigger name than the Wanganee name over the journey. Such a love figure he was. And there's his son who was the sub last week. They went through all the presentation of the jump. A lot of debate about that through the course of the week. He now makes his debut. He plays in the goal square at the MCG against the reigning Premier.